Well, well, well. Happy Saturday, Board Game Geeks. This is Brian Hazard coming to you on Gamerati. It's good to be a gamer. And we're here to spaz out. It is time for your Saturday spasm. Can you believe that I've done, I don't know, a half dozen of these things? And I have yet to spaz out about my all-time favorite board game that has ever existed. You can already see it. It's right here. Hold on. There. What game? So this is my only 10 on Board Game Geek. And it's been out for a long time. It's still available. And if you're into meaty, chunky, brain-burning games, uh, and games that you can play co-op, competitive, solo, you already know where I'm going. The game I'm talking about is, of course, my baby, Mage Knight, by Vlada Shvatl. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, he has made a lot of games that I really like, including uh, Galaxy Trucker, which I really like. And I've heard good things about Dungeon Pets that I haven't played it. And Codenames is also Velada Chivato. He's kind of all over the place. He does super sophisticated things like this, and then he also does Codenames. Mage Knight is amazing. It is gaming what gaming should be. And I know there's people that don't like Mage Knight, and that's fine. This is just my favorite game. It is my favorite game to play solo. It is my favorite game to play co-op. It's not my favorite competitive game, because I think the competitive is the least best part of this. But it is still an amazing game. And I've had Mage Knight for several years now. I knew nothing about the Mage Knight uh, Hero Clicks game that came before it. Don't know anything about that. Doesn't matter. Don't need to. Uh, I have the you know, Broken Token in here. Uh, I did a, actually an overview of the Broken Token on my old uh, YouTube channel if you want to look at that. But the reason that I love Mage Knight so much is because it really gives you an immensity of choices every single turn. Uh, and no two games are alike. The variety comes from the fact that you've got an offering of spell cards and an offering of action cards, and they're shuffled, and the different ones will come around every game, and you'll only see, you know, 10 or 15 maybe tops of these cards in one game. There's a deck of artifacts that you, I never get to see. Maybe I'm not good at my <laughs> favorite game, and that's why I don't see them. But Mage Knight is awesome because of that. It's variability, it's complexity, it's, uh, you know, the, 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 horrible, the horrible dread when you realize you can't do something that you thought you were going to be able to do. And then the, the magnificent glory of doing it and actually uh, killing the general or attacking a castle. So the base game came out first. The base game came out first, in case you didn't figure that out for yourself. And each game you start by this portal, and that's all that you can... That's not true. You start with this portal, and you start with uh, randomized tiles that are out on the map for you to uh, wander into. And every time... You can't see that, right? So I'm going to show you. So each game is a little bit different, and each game has you bringing out a certain number of tiles, and the shape of the map is based on how many people are playing. And you can see here, as you build this, that, uh, that I was building it wrong because I'm in a rush, because I'm excited to be talking about Mage Knight. Um, so as you build it, each game, you're going to see different things, and it's going to be built differently. So, for example, in this uh, scenario, we start at the gate. We get some forests here, and if you want, you could spend the extra movement to walk through that forest to get past those two mountain ranges, which, you know, the people of that land probably gave a name. Uh, because it's awesome. You could stop at this village that was uh, that grew under the shadow of the mountain, and then you could go through the woods, and if you make it through, you could rest and maybe get some resources out of this mine. But be warned, because you see there's a saber there, which means that in that part of the uh, woods, somebody, uh, uh, marauding orcs are known to, to lay. Now, these, these uh, enemy chits are chocked full, and I'm talking jam-packed with information. And this is actually not an uncommon uh, enemy chit to see here. So I will say this. If you don't like uh, sophisticated games, like sophisticated means complicated, not fancy. Uh, and if you don't like that was your that was your vocabulary lesson for the day. If you don't like that, that's cool. This is probably not your game. But um, once you get used to it and you get used to the icons and you get used to the flow of the game, I'm telling you, there's nothing better. It's also not a short game. Mage Knight takes many, many hours to play. And if that turns you off, this might not be your game. That doesn't bother me at all. Long games don't phase me. If you tell me that a game takes four to six hours, I don't care. That's fine. That's a Saturday. We actually refer to that as a wage weekend uh, afternoon gaming event. So we wage mage night. Right? So, anyways. 
So this is a common enemy token, and you'll see at the bottom you get four points if you kill him. If he hits you, he's going to hit for seven. And to kill him, you have to hit him for two. But that little gray hex there with the fist means that he's physically resistant. So you really need to hit him for four. If you could hit him with range, that would be great. But that little tower there means that he's fortified and ranged attacks don't work on him. And this means that he is cumbersome. You can see he's just a catapult. So if you spend movement points and move around quick enough, you can actually avoid, reduce the combat damage that he would do to you. So that's like that's one minor example of what you could find on, a, on an enemy token in Mage Knight. So you've got, you go through the mountains, right? And then you can go to this dungeon. And if you want to go into this dungeon, uh, actually, I think that's a tomb. You go into this tomb and you could explore it. You can bring your allies with you if you go. Maybe stop at this magical glade and let yourself rest and heal and get yourself a free uh, mana token. Or maybe you go to this monastery and you ask the monks to uh, train you. And you get a, a, an action added to your deck by spending some influence. Or, if you're awful, you can burn it to the ground. The monks will send a champion out to stop you, but if they can't, you will burn it to the ground and you will steal their sacred artifact. And it is totally not uncommon for someone to go there, learn from the monks, and then, next turn, burn the place to the ground, because they're terrible people. It totally happens. Swamps you can't walk in, water you can't walk in, and here in the middle of the desert is a mage tower. And if you go in that mage tower, people will think low of you because you can't see what's in there until you get next to it. But if you get next to it, then you get to flip it and see what's inside. Ooh, it's a summoner. This summoner's worth four points if you kill it. You notice th their attack, instead of a fist, they have a little token. That means he doesn't fight you, he summons a brown enemy to fight you. You gotta grab a brown token and see what he summons to fight you. He summoned, oh my god, this thing is huge. It's got like two miles. Yep, it does. It's worth five points, it'll hit you for six, and you have to hit it for six. And again, it's fortified. It's thick skin, prevents you from using ranged attacks. So if you kill the worm, blah, you don't get points for the worm. You just block the worm, right? He attacks you, then goes away, and then you punch this guy for three points. Or six if you're just using basic attacks. Basic attacks? What's the difference? There are uh, ranged attacks, siege attacks. Those happen in one particular round. This is probably pretty crooked. That's fine. Just run with it. It's a spasm. There are uh, fire attacks, cold attacks, cold fire attacks. Are you keeping up? Yes, cold fire attacks. And each one needs to have a certain resistance or else... Uh, the damage goes through, or, or your block is only worth half. And throughout the game, you're, uh, what else? No, let's talk more about the enemies. I'm all over the place, because I love it. The enemies can be venomous, which means if they do a damage to you, you get a, a wound card that goes in your hand, and then another wound card that goes into your deck, because the venom is coursing through your veins. If they're brutal, and you don't block them, they do double damage, and you have to take twice as many wounds. If they are swift, then you have to block twice as much to slow them down, uh, or their damage goes through. If they are, um, uh, what is it, illusory, obfuscating, I don't know the word. There's one uh, um, where they move really fast, and if you don't block them, then you have to hit them for more. There are ones that uh, paralyze you and make you discard your entire hand if they manage to get a hit through. There are assassin enemies that you cannot use your, uh, your uh, allies that you'll have in your game set, uh, to block them. They'll, the damage always goes straight to you. And then there's ones that have magical immunity, which means none of your magic spells work against them. I keep talking about all these magic spells and cards, and I haven't shown you them. Uh, so before I do, I want to show you what happens after a while with the map pieces. Uh, once you've played Mage Knight for a while, the, the core tiles start coming out, and that's when things start getting really juicy. When the core tiles start coming out, then the castles are out. And each castle, like this is the green castle, that's the poisonous castle. And you set the level based on the number of players and the scenario. And then there's a bunch of enemies in there and you have to go in and you have to kill them all and take the city. And even in a solo game, a lot of the scenarios have you doing, having to, to, to pillage at least two cities. And you feel hopeless. And it's great because you're not. And you actually do it. And it's one of the most magical gaming feelings in the world is to actually do this. Um, one of the worst feelings in the world is losing Mage Knight by like one movement point or one combat point, which is often the case. It's a very tight game. But you could have multiple castles coming out, or if you really hate yourself and you want to play in a high mode, they give you rules to make it like a megaopolypse and have two cities next to each other and you combine their total. If you wanted this game to be harder, can't imagine why you would. That would be uh, insane. So, and these are your mage knights. 
There's a number of them once you hit the expansion. Ah, oh, well, there you go. That's Tovok and um, the, the, the one uh, female mage knight was uh, giving him a hard time there. There we go. And that's her. She does have that weird, I'm going into combat so you can see my midriff and that makes no sense sort of thing going on there. Or is that armor? Have I just never noticed and she's actually wearing, is that supposed to be her skin? I will tell you the, the minis in this game are not, um, they're not great. I will admit to that. And like the later ones that came in the expansion, you'll see these guys have the, uh, the feet are connected right down there at the bottom. And like this guy who came later, um, he is not. He's kind of got his own thing going on there. So yeah. Oh, and then this, she's got a terrible face. Somebody else pointed this out. That is just not great. Um, yeah. So there's the Mage Knights and there's the tiles. So every person, I say so way too much. Every character in Mage Knight comes with a custom deck that has these action cards in it. And every round, you're able to pull a number of action cards based on the level that you have. You have these little level tokens that show what level you are, and it shows you what your hand limit is and how much armor you have. Mage Knight is so brutal that if you get hit, you actually take a wound, then reduce the amount of damage by your armor level, and if there's any left. So if, like, I have an armor level of four and I take six damage, First I take a wound, then I reduce it by four. Do I have any left? Yes. Take another wound, then reduce the rest. So you always get bloody in Mage Knight. I mean, if you don't block. Mage Knight has these cards, and each card lets you do two things. You can do the top thing for free, or you can pay mana to do the bottom one. And every round there's some mana available, but not much. And you roll the mana on these dice right here. You roll the mana. So if I wanted to be able to use that block five, and there was a blue mana dice available in the pool, awesome, I could do it. But you can only use one mana die per turn, and you're going to have five of these cards every turn to play your hand with. So these hand cards are what you use to block and attack and um, to move and to use influence to recruit people to your side or to intimidate people. Uh, all of those things are done with these cards. Now, you'll, some of these say, like, attack to, block to, move to. What if you need to move and you have no movement cards? The way that's solved is that any card in your hand can be played sideways for one point of anything you want. So even though this is an attack or a block card, I could play it sideways and get use it for a move one. I could add along this move two, and now I have a movement of three, which is good because the movement in this game, there is a, the terrain makes it difficult to get around. And this is what will drive you nuts, is you'll have everything you need except the two points you need to move into the city of movement. And you'll see there's a day and a night. And then during the day, it's easy to move through the forest, but it's hard to move through this desert. And in the night, it's vice versa. Forests get hard, deserts get easy, right? Because it's cooled off. But this is where the dice go that keep the, uh, well, they keep the mana. And they also show you the cost of the terrain. So now I could move through uh, the desert at night, for example, with my three points of movement. But if I needed more, and there happened to be a green mana die in the pool, like so, like a green one like that, I could take it out of the pool, I could put it on my card like this, and now that card is worth a movement of four, plus this is five. Now I've got a movement of five, I could move through the swamp, which is always a five. It's very hard to get through the swamp. Um, so every card can be played sideways to add additional points. On top of that, each character has a special card that's just for them. It sort of reflects their special ability. Uh, Nora Wass is especially good at recruiting people, so he tends to have more allies. Um, we have, there's a, the flyer, uh, Goldix, the dragon guy. We call him Crystal Crazy, a.k.a. C-Dubs, because he collects so many crystals throughout the game. What crystals? Sometimes you will play a card that will let you take a, a, a mana to, um, die from the middle, and turn it into a mana crystal. Ooh, there's crystals and tokens. If you get a crystal, you put it on your character card and then you can have up to three of every color. If you get a token, you put it in front of you and at the end of the turn, it's gonna go away. So they actually have different meanings based on where they are. You might also be able to use wild mana and wild mana can be used as any type of mana you want except black. Black mana, it can only be used at night and is only used to supercharge spells that you can play, that you can get from the deck. There's too much. I, you know what, I've already gone into too much detail. I can't teach you Mage Knight. All I can tell you is just enough to make you, to, to, to wet your whistle, to uh, pique your interest, to make you think, maybe I, maybe I do need to try that game. Maybe I, I ought to. The, the reason it came up is I just recently joined a Facebook uh, group called Solo Board Gamers, and it was, 
funny because the moment I joined and started looking, Mage Knight, Mage Knight, Mage Knight. Everybody plays Mage Knight. They love it. It's just a, it's the bell of the ball. People adore playing it. Uh, there, then after Mage Knight came out, the Lost Legion expansion came out, and the Lost Legion made it so that you were fighting against this big dude, uh, General Volcair, ignore his bendy sword, and he's great because now it's not just a matter of uh, going towards a city and taking it. Now you got to go towards a city, take it, and then prepare for his onslaught, and you have to defend the city you just took, or you have to run away from him and prepare while he's moving through the land, the, the the landscape, and creating his own army. He actually steals allies from the, from the pool of available allies and draws them into his army, making his army stronger as the game goes on. And that was a Lost Legion expansion. Oh, it also added way more than that, by the way. It added walls that go in the fields. It added um, mazes and labyrinths that took care of the runaway leader problem so that you could go into a location multiple times. It added more bad guys, more special abilities of the bad guys, and it added uh, the, the female Mage Knight. I'm not very good at remembering everybody's name, admittedly, of the, of the Mage Knights. You'd think I would know their names. Like, maybe that's a bit shameful, do you think? Ah, <laughs> here we go. Uh, that is, uh, what is her name? Wolfhawk. Yes, Wolfhawk came in the Lost Legion expansion. And she's good at moving. She moves around pretty good. And then the Krang expansion came out. And Krang was just a character expansion. But he's cool because he's like this weird, orky, uh, druid guy. And he's fiddly. And I love it. And some people said he's too fiddly. You're wrong. It's awesome. I love him fiddly. Keep it that way. Mwah! It's awesome. Uh, and then the last expansion came out. And that was the Shades of Tesla expansion. And that added more monsters and more conditions and more things. It didn't add any um, tiles to the game. But it added things you could put on the map to change what's already there. And Like you could turn, there's a necropolis that is a place where you have to go to find uh, these bad guys. And these are the bad guys. For, oh, no, that's not one. Here we go. These are the bad guys. Uh, there's two new factions of enemies that come in Shades of Tesla. And they each have like this huge guy you have to dominate at the end of the game. It's not easy. Volcair has one of these too. You see Volcair uh, has, a General Volcair from Lost Legions has one of these and he's also uh, super rough to kill. There was, some con there was some controversy when the Shades of Tesla expansion came out. I keep doing this, right? The, when the Shades of Tesla expansion came out, there were problems with the components. The chits were too small, the cards were the wrong color, there was all sorts of issues. And no one expected WizKids to remedy this. A lot of people argued they just don't have a reputation for doing that. Hats off to WizKids. They did make it possible for you to communicate with them, and then they did send out replacement parts that were all the right size and the right color. Still miss a couple of things here and there, but overall, they, they fixed what they broke. And then lastly, even though I've already gone on for way too long, probably, for a Saturday spasm, uh, I, you know, I'm these are supposed to be like five or ten minutes long, and they just keep getting longer and longer. Uh, that's because I have a lot to say. Then... After all that, and I hope they're done because there's no more room. You see, I don't have any more room for cards and stuff in the Broken Token for Mage Knight. But then they went and did something crazy and they made a reskinning of Mage Knight in space. What? Yes. Please hold. Ha ha. So, a lot of Chavadal and Andrew Parks, if you recognize that name. Andrew Parks is the designer of Core Worlds, a deck building game that I like quite a bit, but don't get to play enough. They took Mage Knight and they put it in a Star Trek theme and they put it in space. And I'm telling you, this theme is spot on. You can't fire Mage Knight for me. Mage Knight is my 10. It's an amazing game. And if I had to pick one of the two, I'm picking that one because it's way more, it's got way more crunch. It's a lot more going on. But... Arguably, the theme here is better because there's things that I almost never do in Mage Knight because uh, I, they don't inspire me to do it. I go into monster dens and fight in there that are totally different in Star Trek Frontiers. In Star Trek Frontiers, you're not going into a monster den. You're beaming down to a planet on an away mission. Well done. I will totally beam down on an away mission. Thank you very much. Um, if you know how to play this, you almost know how to play this right away. The only... The only downside of this, and it's kind of a big one, is that it is a lot easier than Mage Knight. As a matter of fact, if this scares you, if Mage Knight is like, I don't know, it's kind of intimidating, maybe try this first if you got money to throw, throw around and you can, you know, daddy warbucks your way through an entire game collection. Try this first. In Mage Knight, you have to block all the damage. If you can't block it all, then it all comes through. You can't block part of damage. In this, of course you can. You have, a, you have shields, so you can reduce the damage by your shields. 
Uh, you don't have to move as much because you can shoot at everything from the adjacent hexes when you do this. They're, they took out a lot of the, there's no day and night, obviously, because you're in space. And they took out fortifications and siege attacks, and they, they took out a lot. And they streamlined a few things. There's no artifacts. They uh, took the artifact and spell deck and made it one undiscovered deck of things. They simplified the way that the mana works. Now it's called data. But it, the, what really appeals to me about this is they really did a great job of transferring the game mechanics into this and applying an excellent theme that's thoroughly enjoyable. Also of note, pretty nice, the broken token insert for Mage Knight also works perfectly good for Star Trek Frontiers. And you can get everything in there. And frankly, with room to spare, they are coming out with an expansion for this soon. I believe Wrath of Khan is going to be the expansion for this. You couldn't pick a better one. Actually, that's the best of the original movies. Of course, that's the one they're going to go with. Uh, but for the most part, a almost a super similar game that is easy to pick up if you already know Mage Knight. And frankly, easier to pick up if you don't know Mage Knight. So, that's enough, right? That's pretty good. I've told you everything you need to know. I'm like, I'm almost like, I'm so warm with spasming excitement that, uh, that I'm like getting warm over here. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in Mage Knight, you can actually go on YouTube and check out Ricky Royal, who does a fantastic instructional walkthrough for Mage Knight. Thank you very much, Mr. Royal. And there's just very active board game geek community for this game, up to even now, with a number of really neat variants, including like a One Ring, Lord of the Ring variant that you can play for this. And people have really been, it's a dedicated community of people who really love a game that uh, is a fantastic game. Rule book, just hang in there, okay? You, you hang in there. You can do it. It'll be fine. You'll do good. Have someone teach it to you. Watch Ricky Royal. Anyways, that's it. We're done. If you want more gaming news, be sure to check in on Gamerati. If you want to see more of what I do, you can check out my YouTube channel, Game Spasm. You can also check out my old one, which is just my name, Brian Hazard. People keep subscribing there, even though I tell them not to. Because uh, <laughs> that's where all the old stuff is. But yeah. Stay tuned, tune in, and I will see you guys next Saturday. Take it easy.